Hello everyone, this is Jeremy, and welcome to episode 2 of Nuclear Earth Re-Irradiated. We left off last time with uh, me planting this little farm here, and it's been slowly growing. I used what little bone meal I have to speed it up a bit, but I've added some beetroot to it. Beetroot has a nice effect in that it provides a fair bit of rad resistance, so we don't get rad with it. But the that just causes this number to go down. Um, that effect degrades over time, so we have to periodically eat a beetroot to keep ourselves shielded from the rads. But um, if we compare it to the cooked lotion here, this gives 0 0.015. A beetroot gives a lot more. I don't actually know what the unit is in, but uh, basically eating these doesn't significantly reduce the amount that we are exposed to, but it does bring the bar down slowly. I think the entire bar is many thousands of rads. So the fact that it removes 28 is not a big deal. My goal is to keep it below half because at half you get mining fatigue and that's really obnoxious. Like weakness? Okay, I can deal with weakness. Mining fatigue though? No thanks. Um, so one thing I might do is when daytime comes, I might roam a little bit and try to collect some of the bones out there. Then again, when daytime comes, those ghouls still continue to stick around. So maybe I won't collect bones. I don't know. Anyways, let's get on to today's stuff. And that is... Uh, well, we've done a lot of the quests here, so I think we're ready to move on to some technology. And that is to get started in immersive engineering. For that, we need the engineer's hammer, which needed string, and the manual, which needed the book that we made. For the string, I've grown some hemp, and I have 10 pieces of hemp fiber. So with that, I believe it's something like that makes string. Um, and get some of my iron, and make the uh, hammer oh dear there's a lot of different types of hammers where's the one i want i want the engineer's hammer one engineer's hammer and with these tasks and advancements get that piece of cobble make a lever and then combine that with the book to make our engineer's manual, which is a documentation book that contains all the information we need about all things immersive engineering. All right. Um, that's telling me how to use pumps. Good deal. So I guess the next thing we want to do is make cold coke. I need a carbon rich fuel. Cold coke is very simple. Yada, yada, yada. I can create one. The creosote oil will be drained, will have to be drained occasionally. That's okay. All right. So this uses sandstone, brick and clay. Sandstone's very easy. It generates underground, sometimes even on the surface. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty of sandstone. Clay, however, I haven't seen any yet generating underground. Um, there's nothing telling me that it generates. So I think for now, we have to make clay. And the only way I see of making clay, so we can't do this one yet because we can't make either variant of slag, is to make... We can compress clay like that. Uh, but to combine it with glowing mushrooms, to combine glowing mushrooms with dirt. Um, so I'm going to have to gather a bit more dirt. Dirt's kind of annoying because it doesn't, you don't, it, like, uh, it spawns in reasonably small veins. But what can you do? For the Coke oven, how much do I need? The, the Coke brick, I think, is what I'm looking for. So I need eight clay per three, and I need. 27 total so times 9 8 times 9 72 pieces of clay all right so i'm gonna go gather more mushrooms according to the quest book these mushrooms can be grown i planted a bunch all around in hopes that they would like spread oh wait that one has spread so i guess they do spread somewhat slowly but if i'm gonna have to go out exploring for dirt i may have to grab mushrooms while i'm out there Ooh, i found a bomb craft portal that'll be useful later but first, I need to get away from it so that those guys don't kill me. And I don't want to run into someone with more radiation. Um, later in Thawncraft, we'll have to farm some of those dudes. But uh, for now, let's put a waypoint there. Uh, somewhere around here? Materials, they can mutate plants into other plants. They can, uh, let's see. They can be cooked to provide us resistance to the radiation. I mean... We wouldn't stand a chance without these mushrooms. And one wonders, where did they come from? Why is the world covered in them now? Do they feed on the radiation? Is that why they're so tough? 
unanswered questions that we must solve. Anyways, thanks to those awesome mushrooms, we can get the clay for our coke oven. So let's put this right up here. Just a simple 3x3x3 three by three by three multi-block. And we hit it with the hammer to form it. Bam. Alright, into that we can toss some of our coal. Which I think I've been storing in ores, because coal is definitely an ore. And that will gradually turn into... In fact, uh, yeah, let's, let's do just a piece, or one piece for now. Afterwards, I think it's actually slightly more efficient to do blocks. Uh, it takes... And nine times is, or hold on, does this tell me how long it takes? But basically blocks burn for ten times as long as pieces, but only take nine times as long to make. So uh, once I finish with that one, um, I'll switch this out. I do need one for the quest anyways. Then we should, that should leave us with some coal coke, which gets us into a couple of options here. Can we get into kinetic dynamos? We can with just copper. We can make plates. One ingot makes one plate. That's a great deal. One plate makes one wire. Later we get two to one. But uh, yeah, that gets us into kinetic dynamos combined with the creosote that this makes. It let's us make uh, water wheels. Um, 90 RF a tick, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, so that'll let us make power without having to burn fuel, which will replace our coal generator. While we wait for our coke oven to make enough creosote, though, to make the water wheels, uh, well, for one, let's gnom on some of this. And we can see that our exposure to radiation goes down a lot when we eat beet roots. It also stays low for a while. Unlike when we eat the mushrooms, we basically have to constantly eat those to keep our exposure down. So, uh, yeah, beet roots, excellent food. Anyways, um, let's move on to the quest here to make steel. To do that, we need the blast furnace, and this consists of a couple things. First of all, we need more clay. We need nether bricks, but fortunately, we can get that without having to go to the nether now. So I think I got one, or I got a couple of netherrack, but I did see when I was out exploring at one point a mountain that has plenty of netherrack on it. So it's nether mountain. We'll head back there. It is slightly irradiated in that area. Like it's higher than usual. Is that the making of an applied logistics meteor? Here's what that is. But might go check that out too. Um, but basically like, so these here, these radioactive bogs are awful. You you have to stay out of those. Those, are, those will kill you almost instantly. But some other things like this radioactive mountain are higher radiation than the like the background, but it's not enough to be instantly dangerous, especially I guess if we eat some beet roots. Um, anyways, that's our source for the nether brick. And then blaze powder, according to our quest book here, seems like it should come from cinder pearls. So uh, it should spawn in desert. However, I, as far as I can tell, haven't seen a desert yet. That looks like a planter to six meteor too. Um, but I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna find that. Can we make gliders perhaps? We can make the open blocks glider, but there's no sign sling, is there? Hmm. That makes flying slightly more difficult. For now, to facilitate getting around, I just made a pillar way up in the sky. Next time I'll uh, drop some ladders down, I think, to make climbing it a little bit. Well, to make climbing it possible. But uh, we can now just climb up and then glide to where we're going. This helps if we know where we're going, but we're like finding a desert. It's kind of still just a uh, crapshoot. So anyways, here is this uh, nethery mountain. There's, I mean, there's nether rack on it. Really all we're here for. I think there's some obsidian too. I might grab a couple more pieces of obsidian to make enchanting tables and stuff out of. Oh look, another mob's even spawned here. As I can see, we're up to 71 rads per take here. It's about double background radiation. It's enough to be unpleasant, but not enough to immediately kill us. Thank goodness I've been able to keep my radiation poisoning down below 50%. I mean, if I had to mine this obsidian with mining fatigue, instead of taking like 10 seconds for a piece, it would take double that, I think. That would drive me insane. As night falls, let's get off this fountain and use our remaining height. Just to fly around and look a little bit to see if we can find a... Uh, well, for one, let's go look for that meteor site. See if it is actually a planet into six meteor. That it is. Okay, um, I'm sure we can grab them at our convenience later. But right now, I want to see if I can find some of that uh, 
a desert. Oh, wait, that looks deserty, does it not? Or maybe it's like a mesa. I don't know. I want to find some of those cinder whatevers to uh to get blaze powder. Lots of endermen here. Algo looks like a desert off into the distance. According to the map here, it's Wasteland Desert Hills bio. But between me and it is this extremely radioactive uh, bog. And I'm not sure if I'm supposed to like go around the bog or try to just dash through it. I think I'm going to load up on some rad shrooms here and then dash through it and just see how bad it gets. So when I eat a lot of shrooms, right, the baseline radiation here drops quite low. Um, and then we make our mad dash through the radioactive bog. But as you can see, as we approach it, oh boy, does the radiation get bad. Let me get into the desert already. Even with the mushroom effect, I see our flowers. We're up at 700 plus. One millirad a tick. I mean, one rad a tick. That's a lot. Um, but I think if we get deeper into the desert and further away from those, uh, the murder bog, the radiation should get less bad. And I think now we're just in the heart of a desert proper, and we can get back down to baseline levels of radiation. Okay, good. While I'm here then, um, I'm gonna harvest my arid garden. Do any of these reduce radiation? Nope. But uh, I expect we can find more. This definitely, yep, here we go. I'm gonna harvest a fair amount of this, I think, because getting into this, uh, this biome here tends to, you know, nearly murder me. And I like to have to make that mad dash less often than as, as rarely as possible. I explored as much of the desert as I dared. I mean, most of the areas down here are like, there's, it's simply too close to the uh, bog lands to really be safe to go into. So I'm hoping that if I need more um, of those cinder pearls, we can find another desert that's perhaps a bit larger. I could, I guess, try to like scan through here, right? To try to find biomes, but hopefully uh, we don't need to. I know we can go to the, oh, here. Here's another desert. It says it seems a lot bigger. So yeah, I guess if we need more, we can head off in that direction. But anyways, um, back at home now, I'm going to go back on my diet of uh, beet roots to reduce radiation exposure and glow shrooms to push down the amount of radiation I've accumulated. Meanwhile, I'm preparing all the bricks and nether bricks. And then of the 11 cinder pearls I got, I'll turn nine of them into blaze powder. Is there other easy ways to get this besides, obviously, blaze rods? Rock crusher, well, that doesn't help us. That looks like, generally speaking, we need either blaze rods or magma cream. And our eye. All right, yeah, look, whatever. Hopefully we don't need much more than this in the immediate future. Meanwhile, let's put some of this obsidian I mine to use. I want to make the obsidian all-in-one tool. It has a boatload of durability. Um damage attack speed isn't the greatest but uh it just uses like obsidian and sticks so i don't know what its actual mining level is i'm kind of hoping that it has at least um obsidian mining level but if not oh well sword and a shovel i think was the last one cool. and that should let us make the obsidian all in one it has a lot of durability, so it has... What could I test mining level on? Uh, I guess I can test on some... Or here, I can just test on a piece of obsidian. Can we mine that with this? Yes, we can. All right, very good. It doesn't seem to be the fastest tool, but it does have boatloads of durability. That all goes together to make 27 blast bricks. So we'll put this... Um, I think you, you want to leave two blocks between your blast furnace and your coke oven at the very least so that you can fit their preheaters in later which means we'll leave two blocks in between and place this here hit it with a hammer and form it but uh all right with that we can take our cocoa um i think it's you use blocks for the long smelt time and you use them to smelt ingots of iron uh, we could probably want to do more than two of. Let me smelt some more iron ore, I guess. Or, actually, can we make the... I can make the squeezer, right? But can I make a mechanical one? No, I need mineral for this. What do I get mineral from? Is the mineral tree? 
Makes sense. And men will wood for the sapling. Maybe we have to get a void botanical miner before we can get that. The quest doesn't seem to mention anything about it. So maybe it just world gens? If it just world gens, where would we find it? We seen anything that looks mendril y? Very blue, right? Blue is a color that would stand out on the map. And I don't see anything blue. For now, then I'll just continue to melt iron ore into iron ingots one to one. We'll get into ore double soon. I believe doing it this way, each block of cold coke can spell exactly 10 uh, iron ingots into steel ingots, although we'll find out, I guess. Um, why don't we just use exactly one block and see how much it smelts? So anyways, that makes us steel, which can we can improve our blast furnace. Not interested in that yet. The thermal electric generator makes 20 RF a tick, although given that it's competing against the water wheel, I'm not terribly interested. Um, some energy storage. No, I guess let's go dynamo into ore processing. All right. So let me make a few dynamos. We should have 15 buckets of crude salt. That's probably, it. I think it takes about that much to make a single set of water wheels, like three water wheels. But um, that only makes, you know, 90-ish RF a tick. I need a little bit of steel to actually make the water wheel. So it does look a lot like one block of cold coke makes 10 steel ingots. That's not a half bad deal. Basically each piece of coal makes one iron or one turns one iron into one steel approximately speaking anyways six water wheels up the oh here let's grab two more beasts pieces of cold coke and 20 more iron get all that queued up to make steel because it's slow don't want to don't want to waste blast furnace up time so i have two kinetic dynamos and six water wheels let's set these up um i kind of don't want to like build it here in the snow here because water freezes in the snowy biomes and I don't want to have to deal with my water freezing. So I guess we're going to build it back here. This should do. It's kind of out of the way, right? Can I make something to level the terrain better? Maybe a destruction gadget? No, of course, it's too underfill. A shame. It started snowing, and uh, my farm appears to have run into a bit of a problem. The snow kills the plants. So I'm going to have to move this somewhere where it doesn't snow, I think. Uh, building right next to this snow biome is pretty tough because this basically nothing useful happens in the snow oh well farm has been su successfully migrated away from the uh the dirty dirty snow and hopefully it can live here forever so anyways i've also been setting up our water wheels i have the ba basic frame slide out i'm gonna try to get all 88 rf a tick out of these this time around I feel like every time I play with immersive engineering, I change my water wheel design ever so slightly to try to get a little bit more out of it. And uh, let's see if I can figure out a way to squeeze all 88 out of it this time. I don't even know how to measure energy flow in this pack. Well, we'll figure something out. With access to uh, steel, I can also make flint and steel, which if I then head down to bedrock, we can use this to light bedrock on fire to make grains of infinity. Looks like we have nice flat bedrock down here. So uh, we just light it ablaze and then pick up the uh, grains of infinity that pop out in about 30 ish seconds one flint and steel will typically get you about 30 grains of infinity it's not a lot but it's enough to get us started in ender isle i need a few grains of infinity to make ender isles faster bank um they do burn if you leave them in the fire for too long so you want to pick them up in a reasonably timely and i don't have anything resembling a magnet so I do have to pick it up the old-fashioned way. Off of that one piece of flint and steel, I ended up getting 32. So that's just about what I expected, um, which should let us make a little bit of subcrafting. Oh, not that capacitor. This capacitor. Four of those, and then one capacitor bank. All right. Then if I make an tr energy trash can... Uh oh, there is no... There is no trash can. Um, I guess a nullifier. No nullifier. What? How do? How do I energy trash can? Huh. I guess I can just use the energy for something. Uh, we can clear MBT data. No, we can't clear. All right, whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, 
I'm kind of just hoping that by plugging this in here, can I put the ladder on top of it afterwards? No, we can't. Uh, I should see that this is producing. Ah, it's not producing two times uh, 88, which is what I was hoping for. But you know what? This is the power we get. 146 RF attack. Um, that's off of two of these. Let me show. Well, let me climb up here, double check that I have all the uh, all the water set in the right places. Oh, see a snowman. All right, so. There's a lot of water around here, and let me show you exactly where they go and what direction it's flowing to get this amount of energy. I know it's possible to get 88. I don't know how exactly it's that. So I have a water source behind each of these signs that's flowing in the direction pointed. So this one is going that way, one there going that way, one here going this way, one here going this way. These are the weird ones, but uh, they supposedly do add energy to the spinning wheels. The two wheels are spinning at different speeds, aren't they? No, maybe not. It's tough to tell. Anyways, there's source, water sources down here flowing that way. Water source here flowing that way. And all in all, according to the internet, this makes 88 under default configurations, which this pack has. But uh, as we saw, this is not making 88. So I don't have the slightest clue. We're getting, what, 73 per? Whatever. 73 per is going to have to do. So that makes us enough energy, though, to be able to power a couple basic machines. A um, couple ways to do ore processing next, then. I think I actually want to use the uh, the energy or the make these electric circuits. Make one, we get seven. That's really nice. Combined with the fact that we ha we've have some basic machine frames. And then again, we get seven more for quest rewards, which will let us make the grinder and then the electric uh, furnace from Tech Reborn, which are, when upgraded, are relatively fast and efficient machines. These basic circuits are not that bad. It's a little bit of iron. This, whoops, is refined iron. It's just made by smelting iron. So uh, pretty easy to do. We can, I guess, later can make it. Uh, it's probably, this just triples it. No big deal, whatever. Um, we, does this method still work too? We can make basic circuit boards. Yeah, we can. This is another way we can make circuits using less copper, I guess. But instead we use Electrum? I don't know. I don't know if we'll end up doing that. The downside about making them... Well, the trouble about making these really is that these require... These, these require this rubber stuff. And for now, I have to make rubber by rubber, you know, retapping our things. I think I've also discovered that by chopping the trees down, like making them so that they're quite clearly not trees, the rubber nodes aren't respawning. So I have to actually uh, leave the entire tree up in order to get the rubber node to respawn, which is a little bit annoying. But um, enough yambling. Let's make an electric circuit. Complete the quest, give us seven more electric circuits, and then pick up our machine frames that we had previously gotten as rewards. Yeah, seven more of those as rewards. All right, so then the grinder. This is very, very cheap. To go along with the grinder, we'll have an electric furnace that completes these quests. Ooh, uncommon loot bags. Hey, flux stocks. Oh, that's probably a better way of transporting energy. Ooh, and an advanced circuit. Better way of transport energy than these cables, huh? Because they probably don't zap you. Can we uh wrap these? Let's also change the sort key to not be R, which is also the show recipes key. Um anyways, how do we make these? Okay, they're not that difficult to make. Uh but these are made oh yeah, with just lead. Lead, red, and glass. Um let's swap out all of these for some uh Leadstone flux ducts, and then I'll set up the grinder and furnace. Actually, even better, now that we have steel, we can make basic universal cables. These are... They transfer more energy than the flux ducts, and they're... Uh, they're... Perhaps cheaper, because they don't use redstone. I don't have all that much redstone to my name right now. Um, but the best thing is they're very easy to upgrade later once we have more mechanism infrastructure. So this is probably even better than flux ducts. All right, maybe universal cables are not the way to go. Despite being universal, they uh, don't send energy into these machines. I don't understand. They clearly connect, except there's no energy in here. Um, I guess let's try putting an item in there, see if it does anything. Maybe it's just the 
UI glitch. God knows Tech Reborn has enough of those. Tech Reborn does accept RF, but I mean, they're universal cables. They convert between whatever energy format we need, right? Is there a quest here to tell me about what type of energy Tech Reborn uses? No, I see no reason why they wouldn't accept RF. Um, let's try something like this. That'll work. So basically, I'm converting from uh, the you know the the universal cable connection to a Tech Reborn cable. That's able to insert energy into the grinder. I don't know who's at fault here, whether it's Tech Reborn's fault or Mechanism's fault, but uh, eh, this works. So anyways, the grinder, without upgrades, it's uh, slow at best. Now, it doesn't use much RF. Is it using... I can't tell if it's using 8 or 120 a tick. I think 120... I think the 120 is its charge rate, and the 8 is its usage rate. It, basically, point is, it doesn't use much energy to do its thing. However, we can make overclockers and make that a lot faster. So these just use... Uh, I guess we have to do this one. These coolant cells can just use water, so they're quite easy to make. Um, and the empty cells are just some tin. So yeah, let's uh, make a couple of those overclockers. For now, each of these overclockers takes a circuit, so I'm only going to make four. But I believe we can just juggle them between the machines as we go. Although it does reduce their energy buffer when we empty them out. But um, with four grades in there, if I throw in, say, a stack of silver ore, I expect... It, yeah, it, Processes it, it processes it extremely quickly, dumps the results into here, and we can configure you to pull from there, push to there. Um, likewise, this extractor, we can configure you to pull from there, push to there. This uh, extractor turns wood into rubber, by the way. So anyways, well, that's done. It wastes a little bit of energy to move these, but whatever. We swap them over to this one, and that one smelts all the things quite quickly. It does use more energy to do it, but so it's like, whatever. It uses a little bit more energy to smelt items extremely quickly. That is a price I am willing to pay. And then when it's done with this, we can just move the upgrades over to the next machine. So right now they're sharing a set of upgrades, but we can uh, give them all individual upgrades later when we have more resources. So I made the extractor. That gives us more useless flux ducts. All right, let's see what comes next then. Basic power, as if I need power. Maybe alloys? To make alloys, we can do an alloy smelter. And um, I'm just going to put it here for now. Claim our quest rewards. Ooh, cables. That's a perfect reward. And then uh, with this, what I actually want to do, instead of doing more Tech Reborn things, is jump over to the nuclear engineering tab now because that allows us to make the chassis here. This requires tough alloy and this, the alloy smelter is just our first thing that can make it. So that's ferroboron boron and lithium, which is steel and boron. All right, let's process a little bit of each of those. We already have steel, so I just have to take some, I have five pieces of boron ore. Can we process that in a grinder? Doesn't look like it. Uh, we, can, we can do the other crusher, huh? All the other crushers, but not this one. We do it in an industrial grinder. Can we make this? With some difficulty. Uh, for now, I guess we'll have to settle for the... This crusher? This crusher is pretty easy to make. This grinder is actually remarkably not slow, considering that it doesn't take upgrades of any sort. This is just how fast it is to begin with and how fast it'll ever be. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's not fast. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not slow. Anyways, that's boron. We combine that with steel in our alloy furnace. Let's also, uh, move our upgrades over because I still only have one set. Let's see, four boron. Four steel. That makes ferroboron, and then that goes with lithium, which... Have I mined any? Yep, I mined a little bit of lithium so far. Let's boron smelt that up. And the lithium. Smelt this first. Combine 
those together for a tough alloy. And then we should be able to make the casing now, right? Everything else in here is just, what, a bit more steel and some lead? No big deal. Let's spin that. All right, one machine. Oh, this is a chassis, not a casing. Big difference. Uh, lead. I need to get more organized soon, too. All right, let's make just one for now. I suspect if we make one, we get No, we don't get rewarded with more. That's mean. Most, if not all, require multi-block machines. Okay. Um, the manufactory is the next thing I want to make. This is effectively a uh, grinder. But what I'm actually after is Radaway. So, oh, we need to make a couple machines for this. These are all prerequisites, right? Oh, boy. That's not going to be easy. My plan is to make Radaway because Radaway, well, it makes the rads go away. Remove 600 rads at 5 a tick. I don't know how much exactly that is. But um, my goal is to stop, you know, dying from radiation. And I think Radaway is a good way to do it. Looks like Radaway right is a little bit further away than I had thought. Not only do I need the half dozen machines that are that lead into this, right? But uh, I also need to actually be able to make stuff like the manufacturing. So making the manufacturing at a glance, um, well, for one, it doesn't even use a casing, but instead it uses these platings, and uh, that requires graph lead ingot, which requires hot graph lead ingots, which requires vacuum freezers, a blast furnace, uh yada 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 so i don't think right away is happening in the immediate future i think we might have to continue to rely on the old beetroot to keep, and uh beetroots and mushrooms to keep the radiation poison down and in fact that we just went over 50 percent so we now have mining fatigue thankfully we're also sufficiently hungry that i can just uh munch down on some of these and i think we can get ourselves below 50 percent again well then good old little beet farm you're gonna have to Keep me fed and keep me alive, hopefully. But anyways, I think we're out of time for today. So on that note, I think let's wrap up here for today. Next time, we'll be back and continue our journey down Tech Reborn and whatever, whatever other tech mods. There's some Ender Isle stuff spliced in there. Slowly working our way towards being able to deal with this nuclear wasteland we find ourselves in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.